Recently I've been getting a lot of calls and emails asking me the question, Dr. Berkey, where are the census 2010 Gini coefficients? And this is basically everyone. I've had news media and, and researchers all over the place asking me this question. And let me tell you why people are asking this question. Um, for the census 2000, I and a student for a project, we calculated Gini coefficients, which are a measure of income inequality for every state and for every county in the United States. And these Gini coefficients, I'll provide a link to this on my homepage, um, www.berkeyacademy.com. Uh, this is a web page that I made you know, about seven years ago, and it's been used by a lot of different people since that time. And the reason I created it is it, it used to be pretty hard to find Gini coefficients for counties. And so this is a web page I have where I describe what Gini coefficients are, how they're calculated, and provide some Excel spreadsheets for these. Now, as I said, I've been getting a lot of email recently since the data for the census 2010 is coming out. Everybody wants updated Gini coefficients. So this video is to answer the question, uh, where are the census 2010 Gini coefficients? And I hate to tell you the answer, but the answer is that they will never be coming. Now, not from me, but not from anyone else either. And I want to explain why this is. In the census 2010, the Census Bureau changed the way they do things. And let me show you how. I want you to understand what's going on and why there will not be any Gini coefficients coming from the census 2010. Let's go back to um, the census 2000. Back in the census 2000 and also in 1990 and I believe in um, earlier census, one out of every six households, and it depends on the, the state and the county, but, but somewhere between uh, 10, 15, 20 percent depending on the county a little bit more than 20% in some counties, got what is called the census long form. And this is the census long form here. Let me shrink it down just a little bit. Uh, the census long form asked how many people live in the house. It also asked their names. It asked for their race and their ethnicity and their marital status. The long form asked information about education, asked uh, information about where the person used to live five years ago. So this was useful for migration studies. We know where you live now. We know where you lived five years ago. So we can study things like migration. Now the important variables when you're talking about income or income inequality and things like that is, you know, these are the things you need to know right here. Question 31 on the long form, it asks you about income from wages, salary, commissions, self-employment, just all kinds of interesting uh, data on public assistance, etc. And what this allowed you to do was to calculate average incomes or uh, measures of income inequality all the way down to individual counties, individual cities, all the way down to individual census block groups or census tracts. But now what the um, Census Bureau decided to do uh, beginning in uh, about 2001 or 2003, they started planning that for the census 2010 they were not going to use the long form anymore. In Census 2010, everyone got the short form. And here on the Census Bureau's webpage, it says, Explore the form, one of the shortest forms in history, 10 questions in 10 minutes. And everyone in uh, the 2010 Census got this short form where basically they only ask you, how many people live in your house? And um, do you own your house? What's your telephone number? 
Provide the name for everyone living there. Are they male or female? When were they born? Are they Hispanic or not? And what is their race? And does this person sometimes live somewhere else? That is all we know from the 2010 census. So if you're going to do anything studying education, income, um, what kind of occupations people have, any of these questions that we used to use the long form data for, now what you have to use is something called the American Community Survey. So the American Community Survey now is something that the Census Bureau does every two years and instead of trying to get one in six households answering a long form like uh, we did for the census now every two years the American Community Survey gets anywhere between one and three percent of households depending on the state and depending on the county uh, I read a report recently that said um, in Florida in a particular year they only got about 1.2 percent of Floridian households uh, but then there was another state like North Dakota where they got somewhere about 3%. So there's, there's a lot of vari variability. And I'm guessing that the American Community Survey does try to get larger samples in, uh, larger s percentage samples in lower populated states and lower populated counties. So that is why there will be no Gini coefficients calculated by me using census data. There's no income data. Now, what you're thinking now is, well, can we use this American Community Survey data to calculate Gini, Gini coefficients? The answer is sort of, sort of. You can, um, although you have to be careful. Now, why do you have to be careful? Well, because now, if you wanted to use American Community Survey data to calculate Gini coefficients for the United States or a state, a whole state, that is fine because you have enough households to do that. But if you want to do it for counties in the United States, that becomes problematic. Now, why is that? Well, take a lower populated county. For example, in North Carolina, we have some counties with less than 10,000 people. And let's say that those 10,000 people live in 5,000 households. Because households are what is important if you're talking about uh, Gini coefficients because people usually use household income. Now, suppose the American Community Survey samples 1% of these 5,000 households. Then how many households are we going to have? We're only going to have 50 households surveyed. And so if you want to calculate a measure of income inequality for a county based on only 50 households, and it gets even worse for, for many other counties, uh, there's one county in North Carolina, for example, called Terrell County that only has about 5,000 people or maybe 2,000 households. Um, you start to get into a lot of problems. And I've looked at this personally where I've looked at the Census 2000 Gini coefficients, which should be very accurate, and compared them to some of these estimates people get by county for the American Community Survey and for almost every low population county, here I'm thinking about 30,000 people or less, the error or the, the difference in the ACS estimates and what the census gave are just enormous in many cases. So instead of using one year, since this ACS is done every two years, what the ACS does, and they calculate the Gini coefficients already, instead of calculating the Gini coefficients for all counties every two years, they only calculate them for high population counties every two years. And then every four years, they'll calculate them for smaller counties. 
and every six years they'll group the data for three different surveys they will publish them for all counties at least in my experience in, in North Carolina you can get Gini coefficients for all counties uh, but you have to look at the six-year grouped data let me show you how to get that since I'm not going to be providing these anymore you can go to this website called socialexplorer.com and I'm sure there are other ways that you can get to this data and if you go to socialexplorer.com down on the um, over here on the you could click on this uh, link called reports I just did this for the first time a few minutes ago that's why I'm a little shaky on this along the left hand side they have different survey data that you can get to uh, 2009 survey on religion etc so this isn't just um, census data it also has some other sources of data here you can see the grouped data this is grouping the 05 07 and 09 data. This is just grouping the 07 and 09 data. If you want Gini coefficients for all the counties, click the 05 to 09 data here. And let me walk you through how you could get this data for the counties. Um, click this geographic type drop down box and click county. And then you can select a state. I'll select North Carolina since that's where I'm from. Now you can click here all counties in the United States if you wanted to. I'm just going to click all counties in North Carolina and click this little add button. And then click next. And here are a lot of variables that you can choose in order to get to the Gini coefficient. You have a couple of options here. Probably the quickest one is to click search by keyword. And let's just type in G-I-N-I search and it pops up it's variable number B19083 Gini coefficient add it and then click show result and this lists the first three counties alphabetically in North Carolina probably the easiest thing to do for most people will be to click this Excel tab and you can click which version of Excel you would like to download these Gini coefficients under and we can open this up so let me bring it over here so it'll bring it up in a nice window and you can look at the Gini coefficients what's also nice is it provides you with a standard error estimate here for each county for example here Allegheny County in North Carolina has a standard error of plus or minus 0.03 now if you wanted a 95 percent confidence interval estimate uh, you would probably want to approximately double that plus or minus 0.06. So even with six years of data, you can see that there's still quite a bit of error. 0.48 plus or minus 0.06. Anson County plus or minus 0.08. And for each county here, it lists different standard errors that you can make margins of error for. And so if you're interested in getting Gini coefficients, by county from now on you're going to be getting them from the American Community Survey and it's very important because these samples are much smaller than the sample sizes that were used in the long form for the old censuses it's very important that you pay attention to these standard errors so if you have any questions about Gini coefficients or how uh, these data are calculated you can feel free to contact me on www.berkeyacademy.com.